Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Devotion. I'm filming from the truck. Uh, we ran late today because we, we had to go get a... Uh, huh? Well, I told them in my community tap post, I tell them what was going on. Basically, my mom. It's not, uh, basically, my mom bought a side by side um, because she can't handle the heat anymore, and she still goes out there and messes with her horses. So she got one that has air conditioning in it, a Kubota, pretty nice one. And so we went, and got hay, and picked that up today. And uh, let me tell you, the traffic was horrendous. But, um, but we got it, got it back to the house, got everything unloaded, and she's good to go. That's why I'm running late. Because it took us forever to get every get out of get everything done to get out of Seguin and get back out to her place by Gonzalez. So, so I'm filming from the road. Um, if it sounds funny, that, that's why. Uh, Ruth two three is our target verse. She gleaned in the field after the reapers, and her hap was to light on a part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the kindred of Elimelech. Keep in mind, all these people are in the lineage of Jesus Christ. But it's so funny that the lineage doesn't come through the males, it comes through the females. Isn't that weird? Because Jesus was part Gentile and part Jew by birth. Because Ruth was the one was the one that bore the children that went down the line that ultimately only ended up in Christ. A little, little a little fact there that you when you realize it you realize this has all been connected every bit of this has been connected it was all on purpose all right so the whole verse says then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers and she happened to come to a part of the field belonging to boaz who was of the family of elimelech let me adjust these vents out of my eyeballs here drying out my eyes okay so let's get some context sorry i was adjusting the AC was in my, in my eyes, blowing up my eyes. Uh, Ruth meets Boaz. We're going to start in verse 1. There was a relative of Naomi's husband, a man of great wealth, of the family of Elimelech. His name was Boaz. Now, in this book, Boaz is a picture of Christ. And it's funny because at the uh, near the end of this book, uh, God the Father actually appears. There's a, a typology or a picture of him appears in here, too. So Ruth the Moabite has said to Naomi, Please let me go to the field and glean heads of grain after him, in whose sight I may find favor. And she said to her, Go, my daughter. Then she left and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And she happened to come to a part of the field belonging to Boaz, who was of the family of Elimelech. Now, I know I got some new, actually got some new people here fairly recently to the channel. If you don't know what gleaning is, when I was a kid in the 70s and 80s, People still did that, and they, they quit doing it in the 80s, where they, would, they wouldn't they would harvest the two outer rows of the field or the corners. They only rode, uh, harvested the middle. And you could go up to a field, and you could go in there, and you could glean. You could, like, especially with corn and stuff like that, you can go in there, and you could get ears of corn out of that. Um, I, I, rem I remember doing it. Verse 4, Now behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem and said to the reapers, The Lord be with you. And they answered him, The Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his servant, who was in charge of the reapers, whose young woman is this? So the servant, who was in charge of the reapers, answered and said, It is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab. And she said, Please let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. Because back then in the, in the law of the Jews, if you're reaping and it, something falls on the ground, you don't pick it up. You leave it there for the gleaners to come get it. And that's what she was going after. Uh, so she came and has continued from morning until now, uh, though she rested a little in the house. Then Boaz said to Ruth, you will listen, my daughter, will you not? Do not go to glean in another field, nor go from here, but stay close by my young women. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap, and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? And when you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. So she fell on her face, bowed down to the ground, and said to him, Why have I found favor in your eyes, that you should take notice of me, since I am a foreigner? And she was. She was a Gentile. And Boaz answered and said to her, It has been fully reported to me all that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband. Now the mother-in-law is a picture of Israel. And how you have left your father and your mother and the land of your birth and have come to a people 
whom you did not know before. The Lord repay your work, and a full reward be given you by the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come for refuge. And the story goes on. I actually have a playlist on Ruth. It's an excellent book, and there's a lot in this book that we still haven't discovered yet. <clears throat> the devotion states her hap was, yes, it seemed nothing but an accident, but how divinely was it overruled? Ruth had gone forth with her mother's blessing under the care of her mother's God to humble but honorable toil. And the providence of God was guiding her every step. Nothing is by accident, guys. Nothing. Little did she know that amid the sheaves she would find a husband. That he should make her the joint owner of all those abroad acres. And that she, a poor foreigner, should become one of the progenitors of the great Messiah. Remember, uh, Ruth was a, a great, 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 great grandmother, I think. May have even been a little older. I don't remember how, how the genealogy fell in, but that uh, of Jesus Christ. God is very good to those who trust in him. I can attest to that. Me and my wife both, she's driving right now. We can attest to that, and especially here lately. These last five years, the last couple of months, yes, absolutely he is. And often surprises them with unlooked for blessings. Yep, I can attest to that too. Little do we know what may happen to us tomorrow, but this sweet fact may cheer us that no good thing shall be withheld. Chance is banished from the faith of Christians, for they see the hand of God in everything. Amen to that, because, yeah, I look back on my life and I see him everywhere. We were talking about whenever my mother-in-law and my father passed here just as, you know, this last, what, month, month and a half, maybe, um, about where, where the Lord was and all that and how that all uh, unfolded and that it was his hand in the whole thing and it was amazing the trivial events of today and tomorrow may involve consequences of the highest importance O Lord deal as graciously with thy servants as thou didst with Ruth how blessed would it be if in wandering in the field of meditation tonight our hap or our happenstance or we would happen upon should be to light upon the place where our next kinsman will reveal himself to us O Spirit of God, guide us to him. We would sooner glean in his field than bear away the whole harvest from any other. O oh, for the footsteps of his flock, which may conduct us to the green pastures where he dwells. Remember, giving up a whole field for the gleaning of the Lord's field. Uh, Spurgeon is noted as saying, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than anything else on earth. So the gleaning of the Lord's field is better than having an entire field to yourself because their blessings are that much richer. The the nourishment, the spiritual nourishment is that much richer. And do we not glean when we go through the Bible and read it every day? Every time we get a chance? Do we not glean more from it? Do we not learn more? Do we not see more and go, wait a minute, that applies to this. I never saw that before. Exactly. This is a weary world when Jesus is away. We could better do without sun and moon than without him, but how divinely fair all things become in the glory of his presence. Our souls know the virtue which dwells in Jesus and can never be content without him. We will wait in prayer this night until our hap shall be to light on a part of the field belonging to Jesus, wherein he will manifest himself to us. And I'm going to carry you guys at this point straight into Hebrews 9.28. I don't know why, but that immediately came to mind the first time he said in his devotion, we would happen, we would happen upon the Lord's field. First of all, we purposefully glean from this field, the Bible. But what about the field when the Lord comes for his church? Hebrews 9.28 says, he will appear a second time for those eagerly expecting him. Apart from sin, for salvation. He came for sin 2,000 years ago. He comes for judgment in the future. What is this for salvation? That's the salvation of his church, the salvation of his people. That would be the rapture of the church. How amazing would it be for us to happen upon that field next year? Could happen. A lot of stuff's lining up. A lot of good gospel teachers, 
are talking about it. They're, they're connecting the dots. They're seeing the alignment of everything. We're seeing a lot of things in our world, in prophecy, in, in the sun, moon, and stars, in the earth, all these signs pointing us to a very specific time frame in history. And that time frame, for all intents and purposes, seems to start next year and will go on for about three to four years. It's going to be a, a time of transition. I told you guys before, next year is a year of massive change. Don't be surprised when you see it. Just remember what I told you. Be prepared. It's going to be a lot of change. We're going to probably see things we've never noticed before, see things we've never seen before. That's a good thing. And we may have blessings abound from the Lord starting this next year. So how amazing would it be for us to happen upon his field next year, the year after, the year after? Amazing. It also applies to something more closer to home. When you are engaged in a situation and suddenly it dawns on you, the Lord's hand is working in this. I see it. Or you are in a conversation or you're hearing somebody else speak about something or, or teach and suddenly it, it, a verse comes to mind and you run to that verse and you look it up. Wait a minute, that actually applies to that. And even better, when you look at the original language and get even more out of it. That's happening upon his field too. It can be in anything. It can be in so many different things. But the one thing we have to remember is that it's always a blessing. When we learn more, when we see more, when we understand more, when we grow more in faith. You know, one of the most amazing things, and, and this it rates to me, rates right up there with an amazingly high amount of traffic out here in the middle of nowhere. It rates right up there with the, the spirit of discovery. When you discover something in the Bible you never saw before, and you're like, hey, that, I never saw that before. That's amazing. Look what that's talking about. And you start to connect dots and make connections elsewhere in the Bible. This one rates right up there with it is when you suddenly realize what the Lord was saying and you see it happening in your own life. When it dawns on you, that's him. This, I'm reading this Bible and that's me. It's talking about me. It, it hits you right in the face. When you discover things that are in the verses that you never noticed before, when you look at the original language and see definitions and all of a sudden it starts to show you some amazing things like what I shared the other day about the whole world couldn't hold the books if, if everything Jesus did was written down. What is that talking about? His three and a half year ministry, his life on earth, 33 years on earth, his time in eternity. And that in order to cover the book, the, if you had a, a book one foot by one foot and six inches thick, it would take 5.5 quadrillion books to cover the entire surface of the earth. So if you wrote everything down, that's the bare minimum it would take. And when you think about that, you think, wait, how much has he done? Wait till we get to heaven and we'll find out. And what that told me when I, when I had, I, it, I thought of that and I went and looked it up the next day and what that told me well actually I did it that night what that told me was that when you hear verses in the Bible where the Lord says it has not entered into the mind of man what God has laid up for him that tells me that if Jesus did so much that the books would fill the whole earth and technically you would in order to fill the earth it would, you would have to do it about five foot deep or maybe less but you're looking at 5.5 quadrillion or more. Usually I think it comes out like 5.5 uh, quadrillion uh, 10 to the 16th power to fill the entire earth with books. What has he laid up for us? What blessings await us in heaven? Things that we don't need, we can't even imagine. We can't even fathom them because they have nothing to compare it to. Everything we discover here in his word everything we discover upon in our lives, when we look back on our lives and go, I see the Lord there, I see him there, he was there guiding me there. That's all a drop in the bucket compared to what we have waiting on the other side. I have two parents, my mother-in-law and my father, that both crossed over recently, and they're over there seeing that stuff right now. And I bet they're laughing. Wait till Sean and Lane get here and see this. So enjoy the blessings and the discoveries we have now, but always do it knowing that there's always more around the corner. 
And when the time comes for us to stand in glory, it's going to be beyond our imagination. This is what we have to look forward to. This is what drives us forward. This is where our hope lies because promises were made and we have hope in those promises. We don't know what they're going to develop into, but we know they're real. So enjoy the discovery of happening upon the field of the Lord in the Bible, in spiritual worship, in your prayers, in fellowship with other Christians in this life. Because in the next one, everything is going to be his field everywhere you walk and it'll be nothing but blessings on top of blessings on top of blessings on top of blessings I tell you this because and I'm, I'm passionate about this because I'm experiencing it me and my wife are experiencing it real time right now and I, I, I can't fully verbalize how I feel about it but it is astounding I can't help but talk about it I can't help but talk about him because of what he's been doing in our lives and it's still going. This should be the testimony of every believer. And so if you can't say that honestly, if you're struggling with that, if you're struggling with your faith, if you're struggling to see those things, wait on the Lord. Call out to him and ask him to show you. Read your Bibles. I'll share everything that I'm shown here in these videos, but you need your own time with the scriptures because when you sit down with the Bible and you have your own time with them, that's fellowship with the Lord. That's, that, that's communion. The, the, the Bible is the bread of life. Uh, the Bible is the flesh of the Lord because, like John said, the Word became flesh and dwelt among men. That's communion with the Lord when you're sitting down with that Bible. And when you do that, all of a sudden, your understanding is open and you start to see things you never realized before. And that's how you get the peace that defies all understanding, the joy inexpressible, and have that unquenchable trust and faith and hope in him for all things because you know that there's more than this this life there's more uh, that's beyond this ruth had nothing to look forward to except well i'm going to go ahead and help naomi till she dies and then we'll see what happens and what happened to her she's literally in the lineage of the lord jesus christ that's amazing that's amazing and we'll see her in heaven and get to talk to her and ask her about all that along with everybody else I love you all very much. I hope this stuff is encouraging to you guys. That's what I'm trying to do is encourage everybody to encourage the church, to, to build my brethren up, to strengthen everybody as we see the day approaching. Because guys, I mean, how can you not say this is, this is it? This is it. And my hope is that the Lord will bless you guys richly on these things too. And that he'll reveal it to you. He'll open your eyes, open your understanding. And so that you can have peace and joy and hope and not fear. Don't fear what you see. Don't fear what you hear. Just trust in the Lord. And you'll be amazed. Just like I am. I love you all very much. I bless you all in Jesus' name. And I'll see you in the next video.